Just like with CS2, the main my requirements for the newly released The Finals had me scratching my head. Apparently, a GTX 1050 Ti is somewhat equivalent to an RX 580. This did not sound quite right to me, and it felt like the minimum requirements were more or less based on what the developers happened to have at hand to test the game. This could also mean that maybe, maybe, other video cards may have a shot at playing this title. This theory had to be tested, and the following four cards of apparently similar performance were used. The Christmas Miracle and one of the official minimum requirement cards, in the form of MSI's low-profile GTX 1050 Ti, using 4GB of GDDR5 and a DirectX feature level support of 12.1. An already revealed but not yet reviewed GTX 960, also from MSI, the gaming 4G version. Also a 4GB card and same DirectX level support as the previous card. The hand-me-down R9-80, built by Sapphire using 3GB of VRAM, DirectX 12 support but only at feature level 11.1. And the battered GTX 770 with just 2GB of VRAM and with the poorest DirectX feature level support of just 11.0, a true underdog. Somewhat unintentionally we ended up testing the requirements for the CPU as well. The game requires either an i5-6600K or a Ryzen R5-1600. Our Z230 workstation, however, uses the i7-4770 equivalent Xeon. Same core count, twice the number of threads, but lower clocks. As for RAM, 32GB of DDR3 at 1600MHz in dual channel. Before we go into the performance results, keep in mind that the game was tested at the lowest settings possible, but without any upscalers. We tested at three resolutions, and the first one is 1080, or Full HD. I'll first talk about the elephant in the room. I was blown away that the game even ran on the GTX 770. However, while the average of 44 FPS is poor, the 1% lows is abysmal. Apparently, feature level support of 11.0 and 2GB of VRAM will let you launch the game, but not quite enjoy it. More on this in the conclusions. Moving on, it seems that a DirectX feature level support of 11.1 and 1 extra gigabyte of VRAM will actually net you a worse average, and the R9-80 clocks just 35 FPS. The 1% loss of 20 FPS is better by comparison, but still crap for a competitive online shooter. The two true DirectX 12 cards run significantly faster, with 54 FPS on average for the 960 and 55 for the 1050 Ti. The cards are apparently a tie, until one looks at the 1% lows. With 38 FPS, the GTX 960 runs better than the 1050 Ti, that had the same metric at 28 FPS. While the two cards' average FPS is good enough for PAL enthusiasts, the overall performance is not adequate for the game. Time to drop the resolution. 1600x900 brought better overall performance for all cards, and the GTX 770 gets the 1% lows in the double digits but still too low, at just 31 FPS. The average, however, rises to the mid-50s. The R9-80 still lags behind the GTX 770, at 46 FPS on average and 26 FPS for the 1% lows. More on this in the conclusions. Both GTX 960 and 1050 Ti have their averages breaching the 60 FPS ceiling. The 1% lows, however, stayed more or less the same for the 960, and increased by just 3 FPS for the 1050 Ti. The 720 results are both disappointing and intriguing for both the GTX 770 and the R9-80. As expected, the Nvidia card still leads the Radeon by 8 FPS on average. Quite unexpectedly though, neither their averages nor their 1% lows improved. Judging by these two cards alone, one might cry CPU bottleneck. But we already saw better FPS at 1600x900 for the more modern cards. So what is happening here? Speaking of the two modern-ish cards, both perform better, with the 1050 Ti having a higher jump in performance, averaging 74 FPS. That is 11 more than the 900 results. The 96 averaged 5 FPS more, at 66. The 1% lows, however, stayed more or less the same. The CPU is starting to struggle. I expected more from the R9-80. Apparently, the better DirectX feature level support was not enough or a win over the GTX 770, at least not in this game. Could this be a driver issue, and would the Nemes drivers help with the R9-280? 
The owners of the GTX 770 should not throw stones in glass houses, however, despite the gaming RNG new to do that. The small VRAM will cause stuttering, and the lower feature level can easily lead to crashes. Also, the smallest game update that changes the renderer can spell disaster for this card. None of these two cards should be considered as a choice when playing the finals. Sure, if that's all you have, then go 720 resolution and have fun, but don't buy one just to play this game. Being on the receiving end of driver updates seems to favor both the GTX 960 and the 1050 Ti. The latter one seems to be performing a bit better, but both seem to meet my expectations of minimum requirements for this game. There is one issue that deserves to be investigated, and that is the role the CPU played in the performance of the cards. For that, a better GPU will be used, in a future video. These cards deserve a deeper comparison, but that's for another time. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. As for this video, well, we're done. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you for the next one.